Hey there guys and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. In the last video we made our way to the new area, which is Heed's Tower of Flame. After we defeated the Pursuer boss fight and took care of the rest of the stuff that we needed to do in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, such as get the Dragonlink Mail. So if you're wondering where to get the Draglink Shield and the Draglink Mail Set, Armor Set, you can check back on the last video. Also, we activated the tower at Boss Bastille so that we can quickly fast travel back there later on. Alright, so we're in this new area, Heat's Tower of Flame. As soon as you enter, there will be an old knight directly in front of you. These guys are big and they hit powerful. So for a melee character, make sure that you stick close to them and circle around their left side. That way you can take advantage of their, uh, their size and their slow swinging power. Also, now that we have a 100% damage reduction shield, we can now block attacks at the cost of your stamina. So you might want to consider putting some points into stamina. So the first thing you should do in this area is head to the right and activate the first bonfire. Once you've done that, head forward and let's take out the first knight. So as you can see for a melee character, just circle around the left side. These guys also have a high drop rate for cracked blue eye orbs. So you can stock up on them. Alright, continue up to the next... Uh, set of stairs and you'll find the next knight. Alright, so after defeating the second knight, you can loot his corpse for a sublime bone dust. Now take note that the first time you beat this guy, he will always drop the sublime bone dust. And also after that, he will not respawn anymore. So it's a one-time deal. The second knight in the area will drop a sublime bone dust. Now you can actually use the sublime bone dust to strengthen the healing effect of your Estus Flask. Whereas Estus Flask shards increase the number of uses for your Estus Flask, Sublime Bone Dust increases how much your Estus Flask heals you. And in order to use it, you need to fast travel back to Majula and burn the Sublime Bone Dust in the bonfire at Majula. So we'll head there in just a second. For now, let's continue um, heading forward in this area. After you defeat the second knight, loot the corpse hanging over the wall for a soul of a nameless soldier and a human effigy. After you loot that corpse, head up the stairs to find the third knight. Now be very careful when fighting this guy because there are no railings so if you fall off the side of the walkway you will die. So the best thing to do is lure him back to the area where we fought the second knight. So just lure him down the steps here. That way you can take him out easily without falling off the side. Alright, so after you defeat the third knight, you will see a lever raise up. Now, it all, now the pulling this level will actually either make the boss fight ahead harder or easier depending on what you're trying to do. So if you look directly ahead, you will see that there is a tower directly in front of us. At the center of the tower is a boss fight that we're going to be fighting. Well, if you look, there's a circle platform with no edge or no railing, meaning you can fall off the side. So if 
you pull this lever, it will actually cause another circular platform to raise up beneath it, allowing you to close that gap so that you can't fall off the side and into the water when fighting the boss. However, some people, especially people who are doing speed runs and are at a low level, actually use that to their advantage because they stand near the edge of the walkway and then they wait for the boss to try and attack and then they quickly move out the way and it causes the boss to fall off into the water and die. So if you're doing a speed run, that's how I would recommend to defeat the boss. So if you're doing a speed run, do not pull this lever. But if you're playing the game normally, which more people are probably playing the game normally than people trying to do a speed run. So for people playing normally, I would suggest to pull the lever so that you can raise the platform in the distance. And if you look, it'll show a platform rising up. So as you can see, the platform has now been frozen, and you cannot fall off into the ocean and die during the boss fight. Again, if you're doing a speed run, I would not recommend pulling this lever because you can simply stand by the edge, wait for the boss to strike you, and then move out the way. This will cause him to fall off the side into the water and die. So that's a quick, easy way to beat the, the upcoming boss. But for now, since we're playing the game normally, because I figure more people are probably playing the game normally than trying to rush through it, um, we're just going to go ahead and pull that to make the boss easier to fight without having to worry about falling off the ocean <laughs> while fighting the boss. Alright, so after you pull the lever, or not pull the lever, whichever, however you want to fight the boss ahead, turn around and loot the corpse for a Lloyd's Talisman. And continue on. Now this next area is very tricky because there are three knights, and it would probably be suicide to just run in there and try to kill them all. And it also might be pretty dangerous to fight them on this walkway right here because it's very narrow and you can fall off into the ocean. So what I recommend doing is, if you have a bow, go ahead and equip it. And then pull out your bow. And you can actually snipe these guys. So I would snipe the one in the middle because there's three of them. So snipe the one in the middle. This will uh, lure him out, which is very useful. We're going to be luring a lot of enemies out in the game. It's a very handy way of taking out of a bunch of enemies that are grouped up together. So just go ahead and lure him out and be very careful because you can actually fall off this walkway. So quickly take out that knight and then immediately after you take him out the other two will start to rush you. Now your best bet here is to just try and shoot them and damage them as much, much as possible. Do not fight them on this narrow walkway or else they will hit you off. Instead bring them down to where we fought the second night in the area. That way we have railings on the side except for one part. Alright, so after you take the first one out, the second one should be a lot easier. Let's go ahead and heal up, because I don't want to die.
Alright, so after taking out the second night, the path in the middle is now clear. Once you've uh, defeated the three knights inside this area, if you enter inside the circular area, you will see that another lever has been raised. Just like before, this will raise the platform inside the next boss area, making it easier or harder depending on your strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this lever so that we can raise the final platform so that we don't have to worry about falling off the edge while fighting the boss. Again, if you're doing a speed run, I would not recommend to do this because you can simply wait for the boss to attack you and dodge, causing the boss to fall off into the water instead of you. Alright, so once you do that, there's two paths you can take. You can take the left path and fight the... Uh, you can take the left path and fight the old Dragon Slayer. Or you can take the right path and fight the old dragon rider. So pretty much you should head to, fir to the right first because this place is uh, a lot shorter. And plus if you head to the left that leads to the next area. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to finish up in this area before moving on to the next. So you can either go left or right. I would suggest to go left first. Alright, so let's head right first and take out the old Dragon Rider so we can finish up this area before moving on. <clears throat> head down the steps and you'll find one more knight that we need to take out. Again, if you circle this guy and you circle really close to him in a tight circle, you can literally dodge all of his attacks making it very easy to take him out. Make sure to heal up to full health because there's a misty doorway ahead that leads to the old Dragon Rider boss fight. But before going there, if you turn around, there'll be a narrow walkway you can cross leading you to a chest. Go ahead and open that for three green blossoms. So after doing that, it's time for the boss fight. Let's go ahead and enter the doorway. Make sure to um, heal up to full health. Now I'm going to give a quick strategy before we go in here. Um, because I'm not very good at explaining things while I'm fighting the boss. Uh, for melee characters, you're going to want to stick very close to this boss and circle around to his left. Just like you did with the knights. Uh, this will allow most of his tactics most of his attacks to miss the only time you should attack him is once he has finished his combo he usually does a three hit combo so circle around to his left with your shield up in case he does manage to get a hit off you can block it and since you have a shield with 100 percent damage reduction it should be very easy to block his attacks without taking damage so you're going to want to circle very close to him just like we did the knights and after he finishes attack, 
he finishes his attack combo, you're going to want to attack him two to three times max. Don't get greedy with your attacks or else he'll quickly turn around and hit you while you're attacking him. So you're going to want to take the fight nice and slow if you're a melee character. Keep circling around to his left, wait for his combo to stop and then hit him once or twice. And then if you feel like you can get one more attack in, hit him again. If you have a short sword, you might be able to get two or three attacks in. If you have a great sword, one attack is pretty much all you can get in before he starts attacking you again. So if you take it nice and slow, this boss fight should be a cakewalk. For ranged characters, you can actually uh, circle close to him as well if you have a shield. Put your shield up and circle around him. And then once he's done, you can blast him with your spells. Or you can fight at a distance. Um, simply run from one side of the platform to the other. As long as you pull those two levers, um, the platforms will all be raised so you don't have to worry about falling into the ocean off the side of the platform. So you can run from one side to the next side, quickly turn around, hit them twice with your magic spells, and then start blocking and dodging, and then run to the other side, blasting with magic. You pretty much want to fight at a distance. Finally, if you're doing a speed run, uh, and you were listening to the guide earlier and did not pull the two levers that popped up after defeating the knights, um, there will be uh, an edge to the platform, and if you fall off of it, you will die. So the best thing to do is as soon as you go through the misty doorway, stand right where you are, don't move, and the boss will start walking towards you. Once you see him rear back and do his lunge attack, you want to quickly run past him. This will allow him to strike dead ahead where you were at before you ran past him and he'll fall off into the ocean instantly killing him for a quick victory. So since we raised the platforms we're going to fight him the old fashioned way as a melee character. So enter the mist to fight the dragon rider. Again keep your shield up and keep circling him to the left. If you have a short sword, you should be able to get two hits in each time he finishes his attack. Try to stay towards the middle of the area so you can keep circling him without hitting the wall. Once you lower his health below half, he will switch up his attack patterns and he'll start getting more aggressive. Keep an eye on your stamina and you should be able to block all of his attacks. Remember to let off your shield so your stamina can recharge faster. Because if you have your shield up, your stamina will regenerate really slow. If you see your uh, stamina is really low and he's still attacking you, you can try backing off out of his range. Keep circling around to his left.
very careful when he has his shield up because he will take no damage. Patience is the key to victory. For defeating the Dragon Rider, you get 14,000 souls. And the Dragon Rider souls. And the Dragon Rider soul. My bad. Alright, so after taking care of that and defeating the boss, the Dragon Rider, head up the stairs behind where the boss was. At the top you'll find the second bonfire. Go ahead and light that up. This is the Tower of Flame bonfire. <clears throat> also you will find a NPC here. This is Lysia, and she sells vi uh, various faith-based miracles. These parts? My name is Lysia. I have come to spread the art of miracles, a practice of which I am a disciple. I can see that you are well suited to comprehend their wondrous power. But the cost of it, that's for your heart to decide. Alright, so you're going to want to exhaust her dialogue. Um, that will make her move to Majula, just like we did with the merchant hag Melantina. Just keep on talking to her and, until she starts repeating herself. Once she starts repeating herself, uh, she will move to Majula after you leave the area. But before you exhaust her dialogue, let's go ahead and see what kind of item she has. She buys the Cleric Sacred Chime, which is very good if you're planning on casting Miracles. And if you're not using a Cleric, more than likely you don't have a Chime yet, so you can't cast Miracles. She also sells the Ring of Prayer, which is a very handy ring because it increases your faith by 5 points. But it costs 28,000 souls, so it's probably better to leave that ring for later. More importantly though, she sells a ton of different Miracles perfect for um, upgrading your cleric build. She sells heal, med heal, great heal excerpt, replenishment, resplendent life, caressing prayer, force, lightning spear, homeward, and guidance. So if anything um, I would suggest to grab the lightning spear if you're planning on using uh, any miracles anytime soon. But for now, let's just go ahead and hold on to our souls because we need to level up a little bit more. Um, by the way, she will not be located here anymore after you exhaust her dialogue. She will move to Majula where the contraption was that we could not enter or that we could not activate earlier. Remember where we had, where we went through those ruins to reach this area on the right side of Majula inside those ruins right next to the Victor Shrine? Um, if you head in there, directly ahead is a contraption where you can, where she will be standing for the rest of the game. If you pay 2,000 souls to her there, she will move the contraption, opening up a path to a new area called Huntsman's Corpse. So we'll get to that in a second. For now, let's exhaust her dialogue to make her move to Majula. I'd heard awful rumors about this place, and I'm afraid they were all true. The king, gone. The earth, ravaged. The burden on the people weighs heavy. I fear that, by now, they may have scarce room in their hearts for miracles. Why did I come here? Well... Do I need any other reason than to spread the gospel of miracles? My preceptor always said this art should be shared with the world. And such is my only wish. Sometimes I fight the urge to pack up and go back home. It is... Well... I must 
do this. And being out here all alone only makes this a more fitting test of my fortitude. I expected this cathedral to be bustling, but there's hardly a soul to be found here. Without any goings on, I'll have to move soon. To a place I could gull the... Sorry. Help the gullible by teaching the good word. <laughs> I expected this cathedral to be bustling without any... To a place... Sorry. Alright, so after she starts repeating herself, that that's her cue that she's going to move to Majula. So she'll say that she thought this place was going to be bustling on, but without anything going on, she'll have to move soon. That's the cue. She'll move no to Majula. No need for miracle. The gods frown upon... Alright, so now that we have exhausted her dialogue... So let's go ahead and head to Majula so we can speak to her there and open up the path to the Huntsman's Corpse. So I'll quickly show you where you can find Licia and Majula. So back in Majula, head over to the right side of town. And we're going to enter the ruins that took us to the Heed's Tower of Flame. So head into these ruins right here. And down the steps. Here you'll find the contraption that we couldn't use earlier. And if you exhausted Licia's dialogue, you can speak to her here. Oh, hello there. An honor to see you again. This room is not as it seems. There are two, not one, pathways leading out. And only this lovely thing reveals the other path. And this, you lovely thing, only runs on miracles. Shall I provide you with one? Alright, so after speaking to her here, you now have the option to move path. So go ahead and choose that, and it'll say pay souls, souls needed 2,000. So pay the 2,000 souls. Go ahead then. And this will cause her to move the contraption. May the power of miracles offer your... Now you can head through the newly opened path to a new area. As soon as you enter this area that leads to the Huntsman's Corpse, you'll find a corpse on the ground. Go ahead and loot it for a rogue water. Now continue following the dark path. Be careful not to fall off the side. <laughs> Towards the end of the path, you'll find a lone NPC sitting on the chair. Now this guy is very important, but he might not talk to you unless you have at least 8 intelligence and 8 faith. Which is why I advise you guys to uh, level up your intelligence and faith to at least 8 if you're planning on casting miracles or using sorcery anytime soon. So if you have at least 8 faith and 8 intelligence, you can talk to him and he will sell you items. The dark stirs. I see that the dark has sparked within you. My name is Falcon. I will trade with you what you need. Okay, so this guy is none other than Falcon the Outcast. 
So if you have, if you don't have at least eight faith and eight intelligence, he'll tell you that he is only interested in dark and to go away. If you do, however, have more than eight faith and an eight intelligence, he'll be happy to trade with you. So let's go ahead and buy some items from him. He sells a very useful ring of life protection. Now this ring is very, very useful because if you have it equipped, if you manage to die or every time you die, you will not lose your souls and you will not go hollow. But the catch is the ring breaks once you die, but you can repair it. Not like in Dark Souls 1. So those of you who have played Dark Souls 1, this is kind of like the Ring of Sacrifice, except it doesn't disappear from your inventory when it breaks. You can simply take it to a blacksmith and have it repaired. So I would highly suggest to buy this ring for 6,000 souls. It's really worth it. As long as you have it equipped, each time you die you will not lose your souls and you will not go hollow. And all you have to do is take it back to the blacksmith in Majula and have him repair it for 3,000 souls. So pretty much it's very handy, especially if you're carrying a lot of souls and you don't want to risk dying and losing your souls. All you have to do is simply equip this ring. Once you die, the ring will break. Make sure to go back to Majula and repair it so that if you die again, you still won't lose your souls or go hollow. And as long as you stay up to date with repairing this ring, you will never go hollow and you will never lose your souls. Very useful if you don't want to lose a lot of souls that you're carrying or if you want if you don't have any human effigies and you don't want to go hollow and stay in human form so you can summon people and play online and stuff like that. So I would highly suggest to buy the Ring of Life Protection. Other than that, he sells Dark Pine Resin which will allow you to apply dark to right-handed weapon. And he sells some very useful hexes. Now for those of you who don't know, hexes are dark magic in this game that require souls to use. Now they have a certain amount of uses, so you can see that in the bottom. But other than that, each time you use a hex, it will consume a certain amount of souls. However, the really weak hexes, like Dark Orb, which is still powerful, but it doesn't require you to use any of your souls to cast it. So I would highly suggest to buy Dark Orb. It's only 600 souls and it's really going to come in handy. Other than that, you can buy Magic Barrier, Dark Weapon, Resonant Soul, Great Resonant Soul, and Resonant Flesh, and Resonant Weapon. So the only thing of use right now that is worth anything is either Dark Orb or Dark Weapon. So depending on if you want to cast magic or not, you can choose to buy one of these. I would at least recommend grabbing Dark Orb because it only costs 600 souls and it has 20 casts so it's really gonna come in handy and it doesn't use any souls to cast it. Very useful. Now more importantly you can actually buy a staff, your first sorcery staff in the game if you're not using a sorcerer class and you can buy a chime. Now these are very great staffs for starting out, very powerful. The Archdrake staff requires 18 intelligence and 15 faith to use, which is why we have been working on our increasing our intelligence and faith. Um, so I would suggest, highly suggest to buy the Archdrake staff if you are interested in casting magic, or if, even if you're a sorcerer and you're still using the first staff in the game, this staff is way more superior than that. So pretty much this is the best staff that you've came across yet, hands down, and it can carry you easily halfway to the end of the game if you really wanted to stick with this staff. This staff is really good, especially when you upgrade it. So for now, let's go ahead and buy that for 4,000 souls. Now if you're interested in casting miracles, you can buy the Archdrake Chime. But for now, let's just hold on to this Archdrake staff because we're gonna, I'm going to be casting Sorcery. So however you want to build your character, if you're a cleric, buy the Archdrake Chime because it's very helpful and it's a whole lot better than the Starting Chime. If you're a Sorcerer, buy the Archdrake Staff. Alright, so the things we should be buying from him again is either the Archdrake Staff or the Archdrake Chime depending on your build. The Ring of Life Protection, no matter what class you're using, this is one of the best rings in the game and the Hex Dark Orb and Dark Weapon. 
you can also buy resonant soul and stuff like that if you plan on using hexes a lot but just be aware that each hex costs a certain amount of souls to cast except for dark orb and dark weapon all right so before we go there's one last tip i want to um tell you guys about if you have 20 intelligence and 20 faith meaning that your faith is at 20 and your intelligence is at 20 or higher you can talk to him and he will give you the sunset staff as well as the hexer's armor set for free so the sunset staff is the most powerful staff in the game for casting hexes which is dark magic so make sure that once you have 20 intelligence and 20 faith you come back and talk to him falcon the outcast he's located in between in the path connecting Majula to Huntsman's corpse once you have 20 faith and 20 intelligence come back and talk to him and he will give you the sunset staff for free which is the best staff in the game for casting hexes when it's upgraded also he'll give you the hexers armor set which gives you more spell casts and higher casting speed very useful if you're a mage this land lies closest to the dark that, that, that is that is why I came here this kingdom collapsed long ago. All that are left are either undead or hollow. Save a few misfits like myself. <laughs> Alright, so after talking to him, like. continue on and you'll reach the next area, Huntsman's Corpse. Now this area has some pretty tough enemies. We're not supposed to go here until later in the game. So don't worry about exploring it for now. Let's just go ahead and light the bonfire so that we can fast travel back here whenever we want and let's go ahead and fast travel back to the heat's tower of flame and this time let's head back to the heat's ruin the very beginning starting bonfire in heat's tower of flame we're going to do a little bit of soul grinding here by the way, the uh, knights that we fought on the way to the Dragon Rider boss fight will give you a good amount of souls, especially for early in the game. So this is a very ideal place for farming souls. A whole lot better than anything that we farmed in the Forest of the Fallen Giants. So I would suggest to take the time to grind for some souls here. Also, make sure that you equip that... Um, Make sure that you equip the Ring of Life Protection, especially if you have some souls. <clears throat> so if you've bought, uh, or if you've defeated the old Dragon Rider boss, you can choose to actually spend your souls if you want. Or you can wait and stack up some souls so that we can go back and spend a whole lot more souls on the next video. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and clear out all the knights that we fought. Um, instead of taking that left path whenever the, the path splits ahead, remember I told you you could go left to fight the Dragon Slayer or right to fight the Dragon Rider. Um, we're just going to clear out all the enemies to the right, all the way up to where we fought the Dragon Rider earlier in this video. We'll clear those knights out, and then once we've cleared them out ten times to where they don't respawn, I'll start up the next video and level up my character with the souls we've got. I'll show you how many souls you can actually get from clearing out the enemies. Hopefully I don't die and have to repair the Ring of Life Protection too much because that costs 3,000 souls. But just take it nice and easy. Remember to circle around the knights to the left so that they can't hit you. And whenever, the, whenever you reach the area where the three knights are located inside of the central tower, make sure to snipe them out using a bow or some magic and take them out one at a time that will prevent you from dying and losing your souls or having to repair the ring of life protection alright guys so I'm gonna be soul farming killing everything from here to the where we fought the dragon rider boss I'm not gonna head over to the left just yet because I'm gonna save that for the next video thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time on Dark Souls 2